Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freud, and this is The Next Page. Marissa, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. It's a little gloomy today. It is. It feels a little bit like fall. <laughs> I was going to say it's a bit autumnal out there. <laughs> That's more eloquent, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's, you know, it's nice. You have to have days like this to be you do. reminded of how beautiful our summer days are. So Exactly. And it really, it's not bad. It's just a little overcast, a little sprinkly. It's, it was a nice refreshing temperature, though. Yeah. You know, and you can open the window and, yeah, very nice. It's everyone's weekly weather report that likely are, does not sync with our production doesn't schedule. sync with anything anybody's <laughs> listening to because we always record a week ahead oh well but anyway so today we're talking about grab the baton part two mm -hmm. so last week we talked about I, I used the comparison of you know leaders need to build their teams develop their teams orchestrate their teams, uh, similar to the way a conductor gets the orchestra or the or the band ready for, to you know to play a number, and mm -hmm. and and I focused on three specific types of of learnings that we do. We 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 learn together, and I really I would encourage people to go back and and listen to last week's if you haven't yet. We learn together. That's really where everybody in the organization is learning at about the same time, kind of like orchestra practice or band practice, you know, where all the musicians are together and they're working on something at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then there's project-based learning. And and this, I kind of referred to this as, as, you know, lessons where the strings get together, the brass get together, the woodwinds get together, the percussion gets together, where you're just specifically learning in, in, in by section. In this case would be, you know, maybe by department or by skill set. And then there's that specialized training. And I compared that to, you know, those musicians that, that have demonstrated some giftedness and, uh, and some abilities, some unique abilities, and we get them private lessons. We get them specialized one-on-one -on -one kind of training so that they can fully develop their skill set and really begin to blossom um, in, in, in their giftedness. So... We've done all that hard work. We've we've hopefully we spent a lot of time working on that, and it all comes together when we get to perform that piece. And that's kind of where I'm at today. And and I I was as I was writing this, I was thinking about why I love going to a live symphony concert so much. Um, and for me, the the intensity, the suspense builds. When I first, because typically when you get to a, if you're going to, to listen to an orchestra, you know, the musicians are out, they're kind of mulling around, they're getting to their seats. And then all of a sudden the concert master walks out and a concert master is usually like a first chair violinist that, that stands up and, and, and plays a note that the orchestra can begin to tune to. And for me, that's exciting mm -hmm. because I'm hearing the different notes. I'm hearing the different instruments all working to make sure their, their instruments are in tune. And, and then, you know, the concert master sits down and then all of a sudden the conductor will walk out and, and the applause will start to swell. And then the applause kind of die, you know, the conductor comes out, turns to the audience, bows a bit, you know, to acknowledge their applause and then turns back to the orchestra and the room falls silent. And then typically all you hear is just a little tap of a baton and they raise their hands and everybody in the room especially the musicians, are waiting for the conductor's hands to drop. And as soon as those hands fall down, the piece begins. And, and, and there used to be a, I think that our, our local symphony here used to have a, an ad campaign some years ago that might have been something like real live music, something like that. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing like it. You know, I don't care how good your sound system is. When you, because you don't just hear an orchestra, you feel it. Right. Because sound is vibration. And you feel, you literally feel the strings vibrating. You feel the resonance in, you know, in, in the, um, the woodwinds and in the brass instruments. And you, you feel the percussion. It's an amazing experience. Um, and I'll tell you, I can't wait. I'm sure hoping that this season we're going to be able to hear some real live music in mm -hmm. central New York. 
So my point with that one is, and the reason why I went into such an in-depth description is, I'm hoping that our listeners are beginning to sense the excitement and the anticipation, because that's what we can do as a leader. When, when, we're bringing our, when we're bringing our teams together to really produce this masterpiece of whatever it is, it's the same way. Mm-hmm. And the musicians come excited. Look, when you, you, were, you were a dancer, so before mm-hmm. you got to perform, what, what emotions were going through? Through your, what were you thinking about? What were you? F- Mostly excitement, a little bit of nerves, and the kind of the you know the camaraderie with the other members of the group. It was like a really exactly. special, like almost magical feeling when yes. you know because you work so hard for so long, right? And then it's like this is it, and you know that yep. there's an audience and. You know, it's like, this is what we worked for. Right. I, I love that. You, and I love how you picked up on that. It's magical. Mm-hmm. It's, you've worked so hard. Everybody's worked on their own. They've come together. They practice. And now is the mm-hmm. time to perform. And there's almost like a different level of energy mm-hmm. that be, that becomes present. Like you feel something yeah. amazing. Um. And and it's just it's and I and I had mentioned to you before we started recording that you know uh, having an opportunity some years ago actually I did a couple of years to conduct an orchestra you know of like sixty or so musicians it's just it's amazing mm-hmm. and the same thing happens with our teams we get to be the conductor that's going to bring about this masterpiece and one of some of the notes that I put in my in my email today was the conductor knows the musical score better than the individual musician. Mm -hmm. You, you know, conductors, you need to study the score. You need to be looking at the plan. You need to be looking at, you know, where, where do you have to lead differently? And, and they, and, and the, the, just as the conductor knows how the parts fit together, you as a leader need to know that. And then I kind of, Drilled down a little bit deeper. So one of the things that a conductor does, yes, they're, you know, by, by moving the baton in, in a certain pattern, they're establishing the, uh, the time signature of the piece and they're giving the, the, the rhythm, you know, the beat, the speed of the piece. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other thing they're doing is that they're, they're, they're literally conducting each section in the orchestra and they're telling certain sections get louder now and others get softer now. And they're speeding up and they're slowing down. And they're looking for that moment when perhaps an obscure instrument, obscure not isn't a good word, but a unique instrument like a nobo, um, where it's a softer instrument that the orchestra now is soft. And now that oboe has, that sound has to come out, has to be brought forth. Mm -hmm. So who on our teams might be a little bit softer in the moment that we need to get everybody else quiet so they can shine? Mm Mm-hmm. And I, then there was another, go ahead. I, I think, you know, in that paragraph where you're describing, you know, the, what, the, what the conductor, what the leader can be doing, I think one of the really important parts of that is it's that, you know, it doesn't look like there's a lot of movement, right? The conductor is just moving right. their upper body. But we know that they're, they are observing and yes. watching and, and um, reacting, well, I guess kind of proactively too, but that's what the leader needs to be doing. And I think you described it as um, the leader needs to know, you know, who needs rest and who, right. who needs that, that break um, and then who can step in to support. I think that is so important. And the way you wrote it was so beautiful <laughs> to think about, you know, the comparison between um, conducting and and leading, but it makes so much sense. And I am not a musician, and even to me, I'm like, this is this makes such great sense. Yeah, you know, I I was a trumpet player, and and one of the things that I had to learn, you know, you practice and practice and practice so that you build up some stamina to mm-hmm. play. But it's not. While it's technically not a difficult instrument to play, like an oboe and a French horn are much harder to play than a trumpet, 
the stamina needed mm-hmm. is 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 really takes a ton of stamina. You know, your 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 mouth muscles, your cheek muscles. You just you get so fatigued, and and yet oftentimes at the end of a piece you, it, that has a big loud ending. You need those brass instruments to be there for that to happen. Mm-hmm. And if they were playing nonstop throughout the whole piece, not only would you not hear those beautiful, you know, oboes and violas and French horns, but that trumpet player, that trombone player, tuba player would not be able to play at the end. Mm-hmm. They would be shot. I think it reminds us how much is going on that we do not see. Right. So... There's, of course, what we see at work and in the office, and but there's also kind of what's going on what, with that uh, behind the scenes and with observation, yes. and um, it's it's a really good reminder. Yeah, yeah, and I for me it was just this great. I know it's a simple analogy, but when we put our teams together, we have the chance of creating a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. And and one of the things I put in in my post was that you know if people wanted to find out how this could help them grow and retain their team, they should listen. And so I want to make sure I, I address that. Mm-hmm. The best musicians want to play on the best with the best symphonies, and they want to play for the best conductor. Because everybody knows that a conduct, the better conductor gets the most out of the orchestra. You know, and, and, and you want someone that... So, so if I want, if I'm growing my team, if I'm making sure that they're developing, if I'm making sure that, they are, that I'm investing in them, getting back to that learning together, project-based learning, specialized learning, if I'm taking those that are the most gifted and making sure that they are getting that individual instruction... You know, the opportunities to go to certain conferences. And when I'm giving them opportunities to play the more difficult passages in the piece, they're going to stay. And they're going to continue to practice and work at it to get better at it, to not let me down. Because they know that if they succeed, I will give them a tougher piece. Um, I, I remember when I was in school, you know, where I was so interested in the music that our band teacher picked. And he always picked music that was challenging Mm -hmm. because he knew that we would work to achieve that. And so the same thing happens in our teams. Give them challenges. Throw out challenges that are going to make them grow, that are going to force them to work on getting better. And they will do that. And you will get the best people to come to your organization for that reason. Um, So that's the, you know, attracting and growing. They're not going to leave. That's the retaining piece. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want to go to a place where they're a number. They want to go to a place where the conductor, the leader knows that, you know what? This person is really gifted in this area. I want to let them shine. And I'm going to pick music that helps them shine. I'm going to get the tasks there for them to shine. And then what's it going to do to your bottom line? You know, we already know happier employees are 10 to 12% more productive than unhappy. So right there, you're going to get a 10 to 12% in productivity. You're going to be having the people working in their strength zones, not their weakest, weakest areas. They're simply going to produce better. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the cost to replacing even a bad employee years ago used to be a year's wages. It's probably more than that now. I don't know how you're not going to strengthen your bottom line by doing this well. When you do this well, I guarantee your bottom line will improve. And and think about your customers. Your customers being able to interact with people that love what they do, that love the products that they make. You can't beat that that combination. So that's pretty much it. Grab the baton, be the maestro, Mm -hmm. and conduct a master. What did I miss? It's a little shorter, but there's only so much you can talk about when you talk about a symphony. So I think you really want to go listen. When when you described how employees don't want to be just a number, Mm -hmm. I think that it's important to say that that you're not saying this only works for small 
organizations. No, not at all. What I think you're saying is that at the team level, this can happen. Yes. It's not like only the president or CEO can make this happen. Exactly. It can right. happen even if you necessarily aren't a manager or supervi- supervisor, if you are leading a team, if right. you are leading a project, that this can happen in smaller groups within a larger organization. And I think, yes, you know, that that could be the spark that gets it going for the rest of the organization. And it just becomes exactly. more and more beautiful. As yeah, it grows. exactly. You know, let me, let me give an, an example. Um, one of my favorite musical groups or instrumental groups to listen to is the Canadian brass. Mm-hmm. And I was so thrilled. I, I still vividly remember they, they came to Syracuse some years ago and I had a chance to go listen to them. I was sitting in, in the mezzanine area, and I think my mouth must have been wide open the whole time, just in awe of what these people um, were, were doing, you know. Um, and it was an experience. It was just incredible. And there's five instruments. Two trumpets, French horn, trombone, and tuba. That's it. So we're not talking about a huge organization. Our team, like I like how you put that, your team be amazing it's just up to you so yeah i i think that was a that was a great point to kind of help us flush out there that it doesn't have to be a big organization it can be a smaller team as well and that will catch on i like you said that that will catch on Mm -hmm. to the rest of the group so i'm hoping this was meaningful to people i hope at least maybe they may want to go out and you know buy some tickets to Symphoria or something mm-hmm. this fall and, and, and experience it. Because even if you're not musical, you can't help but be amazed at what people do. And the same thing happens in our organizations. So you're going to ask me what we're writing about, what I'm writing about next week. I have no idea. Yes. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I have an idea, but I'm not ready to share that just yet. So we'll see. All righty. All right. Mm-hmm. Any any special exciting plans since it really is still summer and not autumn? Uh, no, just getting outside. I've got some birthdays in our family coming up. So, Great. Yeah. How Super. about you? I am actually traveling this weekend. Oh, nice. Going to Ohio. And I'm going to a place I have not been at for, I'm going to say maybe 15 years. I'm going to Cedar Point. Oh, wow. Which is an amusement park. Sandusky, Ohio. Mm-hmm. So, so let's see if a sixty-year-old still has fun on a roller coaster. I'll let you. <laughs> yeah, let I'll me let know. you know next week. <laughs> so, with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. This was the next page. Mm-hmm.